I'm sorry I offended you. My private life is my private life. Not that I actually have a private life. Why does everything have to be about sex? Fair enough. But will you be nice to me again? I'll think about it. And you are so right. People are too obsessed with sex. Like someone I can think of. Dragging that dippy cello player off for a quick shag. Karen loves you, not some dippy musician. I so want to tell him what I think of him. Don't get mad, girlfriend. Get even. Uh, Dr. Giovanni, would you care to join Libby and me for a drink tonight? Yes, that would be very nice. Say the IV at sevenish. Sure. Magic. What exactly was that all about? Does it or does it not take two to tango? Oh, yes, but... So tonight, you appear at the IV looking lovely with another man. And if Karen has half a brain, he will sit up and take notice. But what... And no, I'm sorry, you don't get to be a big girl's bluffs about this. You are going to sit back and do exactly what Uncle Gerald tells you to. <laughs> You are going to knock Denisha's socks off. Do you really think it'll work? Did you see Karen's face when we arrived? I'm not going home with Denise. Will you stop thinking sex and start thinking romance? What we want here is for you to have a lovely evening with a guy who isn't Karen. At the end of it, you just kiss him on the cheek, thank him, and go your separate ways. What century do you live in, Gerald? Good health. You and I have something in common, Libby. Oh, what's that? Just excuse me a moment, will you? Of course. I happen to know that you once played the clarinet. Uh -huh. uh, who told you that? Your mother. How embarrassing. Uh, not really. <laughs> I learned the clarinet too. Really? Boogie woogie bugle boy. Uh, <laughs> I was terrible. I could never get my head around all those sharps and flats. And I used to blow so hard that I would hyperventilate. <laughs> I was pretty bad too. Like the idea, didn't have the talent. <laughs> they make such a handsome couple, don't they? Both of my parents wear glasses, so it's hardly surprising. Actually, it's a relief because now I can pinpoint why I've been feeling so weird. Because you need glasses? Yeah. What did the optician say? <laughs> Just that I've got the usual eyesight deterioration that comes with getting older. So, tomorrow, I get a fancy pair of designer glasses. Quite cool, eh? Yeah. How was the rest of your day? Was okay. Just okay? Yeah, no majors. Oh, except Craig hassling me, concerned of Ferndale. Well, what's up with Craig? Um, I've got the you're not your usual self talk. Well, that's true. You haven't been your usual self. Yeah, this is what comes from being so up, and I nearly always am. I have a little down period, and people notice, and they get all anxious. Except you've been down for a while now. Yeah, because I was blind, and I could not see. <laughs> and hey, maybe I'm just uh, maturing and slowing down a little bit. I can still catch you. <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. Only because I quite like being caught. Mm. Mm. Where did you grow up? In Gujarat. Oh, sorry, is that a country or...? Uh, Gujarat is the bit of Western India up by Pakistan. It's the bit that juts out into the Arabian Sea. We have great beaches. <laughs> Shanti grew up there too. She was such a tomboy when she was little. Fishing, climbing trees, swimming. Shanti was unstoppable. Hard to believe now. It all seems so long ago. I miss those days. Even as teenagers, we spent almost all our holidays together. Must be such a different lifestyle for you here, after UK and India. Are you enjoying it? Oh yes, I'm loving it. I hear the South Island has some magnificent scenery. I was hoping Shanti and I might get a chance to enjoy it together, but... That's looking more and more unlikely, as no doubt you know. Must be quite difficult for you. Coming here, imagining I'd be marrying the woman I love? Yes, but what's to be done? I have to give up gracefully. I can't imagine what it must be like having your family so involved in your future. Oh, to us it's second nature. I can't imagine myself marrying a European woman. Hope you're not offended by that. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, enjoying your evening? Very much, thank you. Would you care to see the dessert menus? Yes, please. You come here often? That is her trying to make me jealous. What's so funny? Mr. the suave through there only has eyes for one woman. I'm sure as hell isn't Libby. Well, you only have eyes for one woman, but you keep screwing things up between you, so why are you up falling about laughing 
I do not know. Good evening, Sunil. Good evening, Karen. I head to Dinesh. If you are, he is just through there. I'm sure he won't mind being interrupted. The more the merrier, I say. Okay, get this. Woohoo! Do you like them? They're great. Do you need glasses? Apparently. And I've ordered contacts as well. I can't believe how much brighter everything is with these things on. And I swear that my driving's got better because now I can actually see where I'm going. Great. I don't look too swatty, do I? Oh, you look swatty without glasses. Now. What's the story? Uh, her name is Elaine. I know her name. She has heavy PV bleeding and she's in shock. Okay, let's take her through. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be all right. We talked about Shanti all night, and Kieran knew damn well it was a setup. Okay, so I failed. There's nothing wrong with that. Sunil seems no, nice. No, Gerald, no, no, no. He's not betrothed to anyone, though, is it? I don't know. Well, you had a drink with him, didn't you ask? Look, I hardly know the guy, but if you think he's so lovely, why don't you go have a date with him? <laughs> Incoming, be nice. Well, hello again. <laughs> Hi, Sunil. How are you this morning? I'm very well, thank you. I enjoyed our brief chat last night. I was sorry I didn't arrive at the Ivy Mud sooner. <laughs> I was wondering, would you like to join me for a drink tonight? Oh, that's very sweet of you, but actually, I would love to have a drink with you tonight. Let me give you my number. Excellent. Can I call you later in the day? I look forward to it. You left your keys at home. Thanks. Dating the entire subcontinent now, are we? Didn't we do well? My baby's dead. I'm so sorry, Elaine. <laughs> How could this happen? You said everything was going to be okay. Yeah, I know I did. It's just sometimes, um... <laughs> things change. There's no certainty. Yesterday, my assessment gave me no cause to believe that you would go on to have a miscarriage. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay, it's Alice. Can you get down to ED now? Look, I just lost it for a second, okay? Something about the miscarriage got to me. I'm fine now. And what was it that got to you? Oh, I don't know. She's in her 20s. Her husband's really lovely. They'd miscarried before, and yesterday I told them everything was fine with the baby, and they're shattered. There's a few things you need to at the moment, eh? Yeah, and if people didn't treat me like a cot case, it'd be good. Darling, no one's treating you like a cot case. Well, Alice sticking her nose in? Oh, she's a mate. She was worried. Look, um, I need to get back to work. Come here. You should take this morning off. No, and tell your little spy to mind her own business. Sorry? Alice. Alice isn't spying on you. Oh, isn't she? Oh, come on, honey. That's a pretty weird thing to say. Yeah, well, I'm a pretty weird person at the moment, or so some people seem to think. Well, so talk to me. Tell me what's stop going on. Stop asking me that. Just stop asking me stuff. Sorry, I'll come back. Um, no, no, no. Um, it's cool. I was just going. Hey, um, do you like my new look? Very groovy. Yeah, they are, eh? <laughs> Hey, I'm going for a coffee shortly. You want to join me? Uh, later, okay? I'm, I'm pretty busy right now. Sure. She's not okay, is she? Well, she won't talk to me. I don't know what to do. I don't make it better. and you have seriously rattled Kieran's cage, so I don't see where the problem is. Well, it felt right at the time, now it just feels wrong. I'm only seeing Sunil to get at Kieran. It's not very nice. All is fair in love and war, Blossom. 
when was the last time you put your toe in the water in that department? I told you I don't do relationships. Just other people's. So why am I listening to you? Because you love Karen and Karen loves you and like the song says, something's got to give. I'm sorry I turned you down for coffee before, but I just needed a little moment to myself. <laughs> I'll get over it. Uh, I've had this idea kind of sparked off by that young woman. There's no point in me getting all mopey on it. Why don't I just do something about it instead? So, do you guys have any follow-up or support service for women who miscarry? No, not really. We probably should, though. Yeah, well, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, I know Elaine has her own GP that she can talk to, but you guys see heaps of pregnant women in here. You must strike the same situation. We do. Yeah. I mean, even if it was just a phone call, how are you doing, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, I know we're all busy, but... Yeah, but we should make the time. People can get lost in the system. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about the whole grief process, which is fine if women have supportive partners and family, but, you know, some women must just feel so alone. Uh, why don't I raise it with Callum, and then the three of us can get together and toss some ideas around. Great. Thank you. <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, box of fluffies. <laughs> I've been wondering if I should believe you about how you ended up dining alone with Libby. I'm sorry, our admissions clerk at work, Gerald, can confirm that, yeah. <laughs> Relax, buddy. I know you're far too honourable to even think about cheating on my sister. I wouldn't really blame you for being a little tempted. But Libby's a beautiful woman. I was unable to resist asking her out for a drink tonight. I thought you were dating that other girl, um, Maria. Maria will cave. And these Kiwi girls, they're so free and easy. I doubt you'll find that applies to Libby. She's a very nice woman. I love nice. Just treat her decently. Don't do a usual thing. My usual thing? Bedding every woman you meet. <laughs> See, this is the difference between you and me. You take women far too seriously. Whereas I know they just want to have fun. You and the nice ones. Sometimes, especially the nice ones. A little persuasion is all it takes. Look, Sunil is a nicely brought up, perfect gentleman. It's a no strings attached date. He'll probably be too shy to even give you a good night kiss. Oh, I don't want a good night kiss. Not even in front of Kieran. Do you want to push his buttons or not? I suppose so. A yes would be better. Okay, but I still don't like the idea. I repeat, what's the problem? You're going to have a nice time, so will Sunil. You'll improve your geography, and Kieran will be in a screaming heap seeing what he's missing out on. What, like last night? No, not like last night. Look. It's a win-win situation. Am I ever wrong? Yes, frequently. Well, not about this. Okay. Sunil seems like a nice guy. I can cope with that. And you're right. It's no strings. Now we're talking. <laughs> Only a week to go now before MasterChef Ireland gets underway, but you can get into the spirit of things right away by logging on to facebook.com forward slash RTEMC where you'll find all the latest from Dylan and Nick.